Running a creative retail business really shouldn't be so hard. I'm Wendy Batten, and this is the Creative Shop Talk podcast. The podcast is dedicated to helping creatives grow their local retail business. If you're looking for support to grow your beautiful retail shop and keep that creative dream alive, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, and I've spent the last 20 years as an entrepreneur. I've run a profitable creative retail business and have successfully franchised my store, taught hundreds of creative workshops, and have worked with industry leaders in the creative retail space. I now have the honor to work with hardworking creative shop owners all over the world, inspiring and equipping them with the tools and strategies to grow their business. Growing a successful retail business doesn't have to be so difficult or so lonely. It's all about understanding a few key foundations, techniques, and mindset. Together, we will dive into what works and what doesn't, have some honest conversations, share strategies and some secrets with those already doing it. Join me every week and together, you and I are going to dive into what it takes to get more foot traffic in your door, more profits in your till and more creative joy back into your day. Thanks for being here. Hey there, friends, and welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I am so excited and humbled that you are here, grateful that you're taking the time out to work on your business to listen to our podcast that is dedicated to you, the creative shop owner. I know how hard it is juggling all the balls, doing all the things, so taking some time out of your day, maybe you're painting, doing something, unloading boxes, I don't know, but I am so grateful that you are here and thank you for being here. I'm Wendy Batten and I am the host of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. And today is our welcome episode, episode number one. I wanted to share a little bit today about the podcast and about my journey and my story and why the heck I decided to do a podcast for creative shop owners. Um, My mission is basically to help all heart-centered creative shop owners run stronger, healthier, more profitable businesses. I have the opportunity of coaching with retailers all over the world, North America, Australia, uh, all over Europe. I have retailers in New Zealand. I'm just so grateful to work with creatives. And we all have similar issues and struggles and highs and lows. And I wanted to bring a podcast together to share a little bit of strategy, a little bit of uh, help, and all the different ways that we can work together to grow our business businesses. We're going to have guests on the Creative Shop Talk podcast, and we're going to go in behind the scenes, behind the curtain, if you will, the back door, behind the backstage. We're going to see what works and what doesn't with different retailers. And we're going to be honest, and we're going to have some true hard conversations about, again, what works, what doesn't. And I wanted to come on here and tell you a little bit about how my journey was wasn't an easy one. (laughs) It it wasn't an easy one at all. And I did want to give you a little bit of my background. So, you you know, you wouldn't wonder who, who this girl was trying to talk to you about becoming a creative shop owner or growing your business as a creative shop owner. So um, my background actually has always been in service, which um, I didn't actually identify that until I got a little bit of older, maybe as I, as I get a little bit older, I've always been in customer service. My earlier days, I worked in the airlines at the counter in, in my town. Uh, and we just, you know, learned to do all the things all the time. And we were just, you know, it, we had a great team. I didn't, it was back in the days when the airlines customer service was primo. It was the number one thing. We did anything that we could to make our customers happy. And I'm so grateful for those early days. And I did that for so many years. Even a little bit earlier, my dad is a retail guru. Uh, I grew up tromping through a mall. My dad was a mall manager and leasing manager and did all kinds of things in that. And I thought it was normal, to be honest, I thought it was normal for the boss to walk through a mall. And my dad's attention to detail in his uh, malls that he ran and were, I just, again, thought it was normal, but he would like straighten the mat at the front door when we would walk in. He would pull like dead leaves off fig trees or notice, um, we always walked through the mall noticing like light bulbs burnt out. And I just thought that was normal and attention to detail, you know, kind of guy. So uh, I grew up looking for attention to detail. Customer service was also really big on my dad's 
um, radar. He treated everybody with great respect, went out of his way all the time, you know, to do whatever it took to make customers happy. And again, that went into my airline industry when I was young, when I started working for that. Um, it just sort of continued on. That's sort of how my jobs have always, uh, have always kind of gone into. I've always worked in a customer service, customer experience positions. I did end up working in corporate for a little while. And I guess long story short, the airlines in our area went out of business and I got a job right away. One of my customers from the airlines, I called him that day and I said, I don't have a job. Our airlines went out of business. And you know, he said, come to my office and hire me right away. Again, back to customer experience, customer service, you know, he valued everything that I had offered him or, you know, the way I had treated him as a customer for so many years that, you know, he hired me without fail, but I was not enjoying corporate worlds. <laughs> I was sitting in a cubicle and ended up doing lots of different jobs for that particular corporation and stayed there for a while, but it was just not my thing. And I was a little bit burnt out from corporate. I am a corporate dropout. I stayed there for several years. Years, and I, I call myself like a corporate dropout at this point in time, which I hear a lot of my retailers, you know, have done the corporate thing. And uh, I'm an overachiever type three on the Enneagram. I'm like, I, so I was giving 110% to this, um, you know, to this, uh, this big corporation and doing all the things. And there was a bit of burnout there, but uh, so I wanted to, to just share that, you know, I've gone through that a lot. And when I left that job, I didn't have another job. And which was really scary and weird and sounds crazy, but I knew it was not feeding my soul. I knew that I was um, running myself into the ground. Everybody else around me knew that I needed to get out of there, but you know, I needed to work. I needed a paycheck. So uh, I did leave without knowing where I was going. It was a very hard thing to do. Just I don't even know. There was something inside, you know, it says you just you just need to get out of there. So I left that work and ended up in a bunch of We'll talk about some time if we're ever together over a cup of coffee. I ended up uh, opening a coffee shop, a very successful cafe in my local town. I created it, built it. There were o- there was only one other small coffee shop that served espresso-based drinks. We're going way back here, folks. And I opened it up, and I remember people saying to me, nobody will pay $3 for an espresso coffee. Like, you are crazy. You can't compete with the, you know, the fast food type restaurant coffees and, um, I just, I just knew it was a trend everywhere else. I knew it was like, there was no Starbucks uh, at that time. I don't even think Starbucks was a thing. There might've been, you know, the original, but not anywhere like it is now. And uh, everybody thought I was weird, to be honest. They thought I was crazy. And my husband, uh, God love him. He, he encouraged me to do it. He helped me, of course, uh, as much as, you know, most husbands do. My children were young and that ended up becoming an amazing, uh, an amazing job. Uh, again, customer service, customer experience orientated. I loved my customers so much. It was one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, but my children were young and my husband's business was expanding, and uh, we own a commercial cleaning business as well. So his business was getting busier. I was really busy at the coffee shop, which was going really well. And I had a customer approach me and wanted to buy my coffee shop. So I sold my coffee shop to a customer and it broke my heart to be honest. I, I needed to leave. I needed to be able to help my husband and be home with my children and who were growing. And, but I, it, it, it just, the customers were coming in crying with me. So, but that coffee shop, which is called C'est la Vie Café, if you're in the Moncton area, you may know it, but I, uh, it's still going strong. So I'm super proud of creating that entire business and, and where it is even today. But, and I share all this because I want you to know that we all have journeys and, and my journey has all these pieces, right? It has all these like different things that kind of build and layer upon each other and help you with growing your you know, what you end up being. So um, I stayed home and worked uh, with, for my husband from home, bookkeeping, invoicing, all kinds of exciting stuff for several, several years. And when my daughter was 16, she said to me, mom, you need a hobby other than me. True story. Uh, and she was right. So I did need a hobby other than her. And we were serial DIYers, just like maybe some of you are out there listening. Um, we loved upcycle, recycle. You know, we 
would, you know, renovate on a budget. We were all, you know, always just improving our home as we could bit by bit, recycled furniture, painting a room, adding plank walls, whatever, like just bit by bit, you know, a little bit by little bit trying to improve our home. And, uh, and that's sort of, you know, how I ended up with a blog called Front Porch Mercantile. I decided to start blogging about these painted projects I was doing. And at the time I was having paint shipped into me or if a friend was out of town, I would get them to find the nearest store that I was looking for, for my, my chalk paints and my milk paints and all the paints I was using. And it all seems so crazy now because I know they're everywhere. But at the time there were no paint retailers in our area at all. Nobody even painted furniture. I was a, another, another weirdo on the scale of what's normal. It wasn't, it was, wasn't even normal to be painting furniture at all so in my area so um i just wanted to let you know that that's how fr- that's how my uh store front porch mercantile started it was a blog a lot of people think it was a store first i know it's got mercantile in it it mostly because i was painting furniture for myself but then i s- sort of ran out of things to paint for myself um although i'm still painting things for myself but people started asking me to paint for them so i was uh, making a little extra money painting flipping furniture just like maybe many of you started and i decided to call my i was selling furniture off the porch off of our big front porch and that's where front porch and then mercantile came from it was just serendipitous i don't know if that's the right wording for it but that i eventually did open a store and didn't have to change my name but um i ended up um this little blog we only had like a couple of blog posts i didn't know what i was doing to be honest no idea and uh i ended up attending a blogging conference to this day i have no idea and i cannot explain to you how i even came to the decision to attend a conference in atlanta georgia which was so outside. I hadn't been on a plane in eight years and my, I couldn't really afford it. So I painted a bunch of furniture. It was expensive trip. I, I really cannot tell you what drove me to push by on the tickets for the conference. I can tell you that at the kitchen table, when I told my husband I was going to a vlogging conference, they all just froze. Nobody was like upset. They were just shocked. It was just really interesting. So I went to a conference and I met my people. I found so many people that were doing what I was doing. I, I cry now thinking about it. I found my tribe. I, I say that over and over again. I found my tribe. And the fat story thin is that those people encouraged me to come back here and sell the paint here. Like, you know, they were like, you know, open a store, sell the paint, get a studio, make this, you know, more legit. And that's what we did. And I opened a retail business in the worst location. It was a tiny little, you know, next to my friend's yoga studio in her backyard in the woods out of town. It was just hilarious now that, you know, you look back and location, 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 what, you know, many of you think that you need, you don't, if you build the right right reputation. Um, Nobody had heard of my paints. No one had been painting furniture. Again, I was back to being that weirdo. Um, And I just started building my business by word of mouth and Facebook and growing and growing and growing. And it was um, just really, it was just an amazing experience. I built it with free demos, uh, workshops, things that we'll be talking about here on this podcast. I built it with excellent customer service. I'm going to brag on myself for that. I worked really, really hard at uh, keeping my customers happy, making sure they knew, you know, I had the right products and working at, you know, selling only really high quality products. But all of this, you know, was just growing and growing and growing. And all of this, I was winging it, guys. I was winging it like I maybe some of you were doing it. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't have marketing. I didn't have help. I had a little bit of part-time help from my very good friend, Lise. But I did not have a plan. I did not, you know, I was busy all the time. I didn't feel like I had enough money. Like I just, it was going, coming in, going out, coming in, going out. I don't know if you can relate to that. I, I bet you can but I was really busy and I was working a lot of hours. I was um, doing all the things, stocking, ordering, unpacking, painting, teaching, you know, smiling, te- you know, serving, uh, ordering. It just, it just, it was like a never ending hamster wheel. And I was truthfully getting burnt out. So I did that for a couple of years like that. And one day my daughter, the one that told me I needed a hobby other than her, and she was right. Um, When she was 19, she told me she was moving to New Zealand. That's a long ways from where I live. It shocked me. I had three weeks to spend with her. 
And again, long story short is that I realized that was such a shocking moment to me that I couldn't just, you know, take the time to be with her and do what I needed to do, um, you know, to hang out with her and help her get ready to go and all that kind of thing, because I was so busy with this job that I had created from this hobby. And it wasn't what I was, wasn't what I was dreaming it should have been. And it's not the life that I wanted. I, you know, I was just working too hard and too much. And I, and I, again, I don't know, I, I, I suspect some of you can relate to that as well too. I was just working so hard. I loved it. And, you know, I loved what I was doing. I loved my customers. I loved everything about it, but I hated it at the same time. It wasn't the life that I was trying to, to build. Um, it wasn't the, when I took a good hard look at it, it wasn't what I needed to do. And I actually wrote a blog post that week after my daughter left. When she got on that plane, I crashed, guys. She got on that plane and oh, I could cry now thinking about it. But, and I had the greatest customers. They were so supportive. I closed the shop for a couple of days. I was just, I could not even function. I was, you know, I hit that burnout and I'd had enough. So I wrote a blog post on my Front Porch Mercantile blog, um, which is actually still there and I can share if anybody's interested. But I'd had enough and I wrote a blog post and it was unbelievable how many fellow retailers that I didn't even know were reading my blog just me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. It's all I heard. And it just broke my heart into a million pieces that so many retailers, it wasn't just me. First of all, part of me was like, okay, I'm not alone. But the other part of me, it broke my heart. And I just felt compelled to finally make a change and get some coaching. I was through almost into my third year. I was in two and a half years, almost my third year of business at this point in time of my retail business. And uh, I wanted to turn things around. So I got some coaching. It was hard to find, but I started putting all these pieces together. I started asking business mentors that I knew in completely different industries. I, you know, just started asking them, you know, can you tell me what I should do and tell me who I should talk to and show me. So I ended up getting several coaches, which, you know, investing in that was really scary and hard for me. I didn't have the money, extra money, because I was working so hard and all the money was coming in and going out. And I don't know where it was going, to be honest. I have no idea. I do now. But at the time, I had no idea where my money was going. I was making money. Like the store was busy. But anyway, I did get the money together. I did hire some coaches. I started doing some hard things that I wasn't doing before that they all suggested I do and promotional calendars and getting into my numbers and dialing things in. And I changed everything around within, within months, things just started changing around. Um, things started getting not easier, but they were like, I was making more money and I doubled my sales and I just, everything just started clicking. And I thought, oh, I've got some aha moments here now to share. But I was um, making such a change that people noticed. I was working at the time for other paint lines. I worked for a lot of industry leaders. I still do at this time. I work for, you know, as a consultant for many people, retailers started asking me and, you know, I was being, you know, I, I was helping retailers. I was uh, sharing what I could with friends. I mean, we're all friends, right? You have, you have a group of retailer friends. I know you hang out with that, you know, and you just, we were all helping each other and it slowly became, I took a few courses and it slowly became this something like I'm going to have to charge for my time. So it just slowly started becoming a retail coach. And, and I don't know, I, I would love to be able to tell you that I have a big giant degree in coaching retail. I don't, it's all experience based. You know, I've been now teaching retailers. Uh, it's just been an incredible mission and passion of mine to help retailers. And that got kind of crazy at that at one point trying to run the store. And I hired a lot of staff and I was, you know, running the store and coaching and working for a lot of the uh, paint lines. And I loved everything about it, guys. I loved, like, I loved that I didn't want to give up anything. But as I say, and as I coach with my creative shop owners that I work with, we have to put the balls down sometimes. We have to put something down. We can't do everything well. So I decided, or it's a very long story and I'll share some time, of course, on the podcast here, but we ended up franchising my store. It needed to move. It needed, it needed a lot more attention than I was able to give it um, because I, my, I was spread so thin. It was still doing well, very well, but not, it could have done better. And uh, we franchised our store and, um, uh, it was a wonderful experience. Um, the store was moved and reopened and just uh, did really well. Customers were happy. They had attention. And my husband and I sold everything we owned, ran away from home. And now I coach retailers almost exclusively full-time. I still have a small studio 
I still teach paint workshops on occasion. I still um, have a, a small hand in a booth space right now uh, is selling paints and I'm still in the trenches a little bit, but my primary job now is working with creative shop owners, which I have been doing almost exclusively now for um, several years. And again, as I said, I work with retailers all over the world. It is such a pleasure, such a joy to watch retailers you know, grow and thrive. I, I work with uh, group coaching. We have some group coaching uh, called the Paint Printers Inner Circle. It's my monthly group coaching. We have, um, I have a course that I've created from me to them, like retailer to retailer, just exactly what they need. And I work one-on-one a lot with uh, creative shop owners. Um, and, and it's just such a joy. And again, retreats and we do all kinds of other live events and whatnot. But um, it has been such a, it's a, it's really my creative passion. It's my mission now um, to be, to, to help creative shop owners. It comes from my heart and I just absolutely love it. So I get it. I know what you're going through. I get it. Um, all the balls in the air. I know that, you know, it's just, um, it's just hard to do all the things. And I understand taking your passion to, from your hobby to, you know, your passion, and your hobby, turning it into a profitable business can be so hard. Um, so what you can expect here on Creative Shop Talk, um, we're going to dive in, we're going to see what works, like truly what works and what doesn't. We're going to talk about, you know, talk to people. We're going to have guests coming in um, and see behind the curtains again what, you know, they're, we're going to get some real talk. <laughs> you know, we're going to learn and see what it takes to build a profitable retail business. It can totally be done. There's lots of people doing it. Um, you're not alone. There's all kinds of us um, out there doing the things that, you know, to help make retailers thrive. And you can do it as well, too. We're going to have some really honest conversations, though. It's not going to be a fluff. Anyway, I wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to tell you my story of how I went from an overwhelmed, <laughs> crazy, creative person, you know, to uh, trying to put all the pieces together of this crazy retail world for creatives, because we're a different breed, right? We're not just selling widgets. We're, you know, we're heart centered. We love what we do. We love our customers. We love our products. We had this vision when we designed and dreamed about our business and being in the trenches, though, can be a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit shocking at times, right? So I get it. I know it's overwhelming. I know, you you know, you need somebody to help put the pieces together. And I hope I can help you do that by sharing uh, my experience, by sharing um, the experience I'm hearing from all of my fellow retailers and uh, that I get to work with again from all over the world. And we'll have some great guests coming in as well to help us with all the little nitty gritty things and share their experiences as well too. So thank you so much for joining me today uh, here on the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I am so uh, honored that you're here. I'm so excited to be uh, on this journey with you. And I'm so grateful that you took the time today to listen all the way to the end. Uh, I promise they won't all be long podcasts, but I really did want to share my story so you'd understand where I'm coming from and, and how grateful I am to have you listening. And I cannot wait to see where this journey takes um, all of you, my uh, fellow retailers as well too. So thank you so much for being here. You can uh, find more information at uh, wendybatten.com. I would love, love, love if you would subscribe to the podcast and uh, leave us a review. We're hoping to have some really great guests and we're hoping to be able to serve you with what you need. So we'll see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I know how precious your time is and I'm so appreciate you uh, taking time out of your crazy day to be here with us. All the links for today's show can be found at wendybatten.com slash podcast. We'd also like to invite you to come over and continue the conversation over on my free Facebook group. It's called Rockstar Creatives. I'm going to be popping in there live every week to continue the conversation, talk a little bit about what we spoke about today. And I'd love for you to join us over there. Rockstar Creatives creatives on Facebook. I'd also love to ask if it's not too much trouble if you could leave me a review and let me know what you think of the podcast. If you're loving the show, be sure that you're subscribing to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. I'd hate for you to miss one. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you today. I'll see you next week here on the Creative Shop Talk podcast.